<laughs> hey gang, it's March. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It is after work time, but more importantly, it's hump day. Oh. That means it's happy hour for the dentists in the know. This is your backstage look at current trends, politics, and education in the dental world. It is live, as you can well see. <laughs> <laughs> it is also over a cocktail. I'm Dr. Jeff Horowitz. Next to me is Dr. Chad Duplantis and Dr. Jennifer Bell. All of us are practicing dentists. We are all educators. We're all business owners. And our job is to bring all the dental community in the know. We we have a great show tonight. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that we always get great response to are um, the conversations that we have that revolve around the team the hygiene department, the assistants, the front office, and how we can all work better together. And so tonight we have another program like that. Um, we have a dental hygienist who also happens to have a PhD in business, in leadership. And um, she is a, a, a great person that I've just gotten to meet in person for the first time. Her name is Dr. Kelly Tanner, and she's going to be talking to us about group dynamics, about team improvement, and um, something called metacognition. Chad, that's not a new dinosaur. That's a big word. It, it's not a newfound dinosaur. No. So look it up, come back to the conversation, and you can ask, maybe we'll let you ask some questions. Hey, Siri. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, really excited to have Kelly. We got to chat with her for a few minutes before the show. So really dynamic uh, young lady. So I'm really excited to, to be talking with her. And uh, But before that, you know, JB, I think we need some news. We need what some dental news. Well, Everyone's dying for it's it. It's a little hard. I mean, frankly, if I'm, if I'm being honest, it's a little hard to talk about any news right now when there's a war. I, I know. So, yeah, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the biggest news story of the week since we last met together. And that is that we now uh, have a war going on. And I haven't checked in in the last few hours, but I've been watching pretty intently um, and just praying for for good decisions and, and strong people to survive. Um but in the world of dentistry, that doesn't slow down the dental news to take hold and, and continue to, to make its way. So a couple of good things and a couple of bad things. Number one, I have to remind you again, we are now 30 days away, 29 days away from the HRSA application due date. If you took funding during period two, which I think a good majority of folks did, um, there's an application that is due and needs to be processed. So um, just a you know, PSA out there to all my people, I am like 75% done. So I too still have work to do to finish the application. Um, there was uh, a little bit of discussion. I think that there's still, you know, we talked about the OSHA emergency standard for COVID. I think we all took a little bit of a sigh of relief when, when that got repealed and we were able to sort of go back to doing business as usual. Um, it seems that the momentum is picking back up again to make it a more permanent standard um, as a kind of overarching infectious disease standard and not just specific to COVID, but just overarching. Um, what we did talk about a few episodes ago was how important when permanent standards are going to come into place, there's usually open comment period and lots of discussion that will happen. So usually these things don't happen overnight, much like the wheels of government. It's nice and slow. So there's a lot of opportunity to provide feedback. I know most of the major dental organizations are watching this very closely. Um, I'll keep you posted if open comment period comes available and you want to participate or want to send feedback to, you know, the AGD or ADA who likely will be participating in those open comment periods, because it does look like we're back to um, considering this as a long term standard for infectious control, infectious disease control, um, which would be in addition to bloodborne pathogen standards. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, 
there was, this is kind of interesting. So the ready act was something that got, um, I actually think, let me post to see if it got approved. Um, it was introduced this week and this is, do we really need an act to be ready? What do we really need an act to be ready? Yeah, no, no, Jeff, sorry. Sorry. R E D I, which is to yeah. give loan forbearance and uh, pause for folks that are in residency programs. So this would apply to dentists as well. When dentists enroll in fellowship and residency programs outside of dental school, for most of us, and this happened to me as well, I still accrued interest, but I didn't have to. I was in. Um, some type of temporary status where I didn't have to make payments, but I was still accruing interest on the loan. Um, there's an act being proposed now that would actually pause your loan altogether for the duration of your residency or fellowship and would reinstate and you wouldn't accrue interest in that time period. There's been a lot of these things for student interest over time. Most of them have been very favorable. Seems to be a lot of support for this one as well. I'll keep you posted. I think it would be really good to any alleviation of burden. I mean, if you think about it, if the average student debt now is $500,000, the minute you graduate, if you go do a residency program, which I think the three of us would all encourage, I think that's a good step in your career path. Um, a $500,000 loan accruing interest over 12 month period, that's a pretty significant amount of money. And so, you know, there's some incentive there to relook at how uh, we handle those when they've graduated, but they're not really fully into the working force yet. So I'll keep you posted on that as well. Any questions, boys? Still working on that metacognition thing, but I got you covered. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll. Um, <clears throat> and I'm we'll, still in. I'm still we're in. Gonna get there, mode. and Kelly's going to help us, and so you know, I think that's important. Yeah. Um, I think uh, two other things that we'll mention, the ADA did post kind of a high alert on cybersecurity. I think because of the war between Ukraine and, Ukraine and Russia, there was some concern that cyber uh, hacking and other things may get heightened up a bit. And so they're just continuing to in encourage uh, very adequate safety measures when you're talking about cybersecurity. And lastly Wait, um, before you do that jb let me i do want to interrupt there because i just think that that's a smart thing for everyone right now absolutely not not politically they're real we are i don't know that we've ever been in a situation where we are more likely to experience some type of yeah. cyber event you know whatever it is so i would just encourage everyone just make sure your pa passwords are good make just well, one of the other that, that was a threat from the leadership of Russia. Correct. Was was Correct. was hacking and, and one of the other things that I think uh, when we're talking PSAs, um, please check with your carriers and make sure that you have some cybersecurity protection or insurance. Um, I actually we had a colleague in our town who got hit about a month and a half ago, and it took. Um, they got them up temporarily running, but it took a full three or four days to get them fully operational again. And they were paying an IT specialist and other folks, and they had to buy all new computers because they couldn't resurrect all the computers that wow. had been. So it was a pretty significant bill. Um, but they did have some cybersecurity. And of course, that encouraged me to reach out to my carrier and say, hey, I think I have this, but I want to double check to make sure. I think it's really important to make sure that you have cyber protection for, you know, at least to cover some percentage of the cost that might be associated with that. Me personally, in my office, our bis biggest risk is leaking water through the ceiling because we're on our fourth <laughs> flood. And so I definitely have to have flood insurance from above, but most other people don't need all that kind of protection. They can just get cybersecurity and be fine. Um, so I think you really need to make sure that you're checking in on that and check with your carriers to make sure that you have a, a, a rider on your policy for that. Okay. The last thing that I will talk about this evening is that, um, there was an, you know, the ADA has been collecting data throughout the pandemic and they send out weekly surveys trying to capture, um, what's happening 
you know, on the grassroots level for dentists and how they're responding to the pandemic. Interesting enough, and I think if I think you both felt this as well, there was an 83 percent um, occupancy rate they gave it. Uh, that most dentists were experiencing some downturn in business yeah. at the end of January and beginning or, or through February um, because of COVID and COVID related issues uh, for folks keeping their appointments. And so I definitely felt that they were it always felt like the day we got there, we would see one schedule. And by the end of the day, it would look completely different. Maybe we backfilled some of it. Maybe, we definitely had days where we we did not successfully backfill it. Um, but it, it was just a crapshoot and, and it worked because half of my people were calling out all the time. So we just, you know, made it adjust. But I think it was interesting to see that that wasn't just isolated to us. It wasn't just isolated to the Southeast or whatever. It sounds like it was pretty well felt by the industry as a whole. I will say this week I'm seeing the light. I think our schedules have been holding a lot better um, we're getting a lot less uh, staff members calling out and also uh, patients calling out concerned they can't come in because of COVID exposure or whatever. So hopefully we've seen the turn of that. So anyway, that's the news. Tonight, our guest is Dr. Kelly Tanner, and she is an amazing human being. We've met virtually and through texts over the past few months, uh, Jennifer and uh Kelly and I are going to be doing a class together next month in Raleigh. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Kelly is a not just a hygienist. She has a PhD in business and leadership. She's the CEO of Next Level Dental Hygiene and Ascend Health Partner. She's also got a couple other things up her sleeve. She really works with the team. Um, she works with corporate, she works with entrepreneurs, she researches, she's a pretty outstanding leader within our profession. And it's an honor to, I think it's safe to call her a friend, but I just would like to share with you all that she also works on metacognition. And that is the awareness or understanding of the <laughs> thought process. Mr. Webster I just says thought that was really important <laughs> for said. everybody to know what metacognition is. I'm so proud of you, Chad, right now. Thank you. I had it pulled up on my phone in case you needed a <laughs> I don't remember what it meant to. I was one step ahead of you, Kelly. No, I was I was, you know, I'm I've got you, Chad. I've got you. It's well, I probably butchered your bio because I was so excited that I actually had the definition. So I apologize. But you know what? Forget bios. Why don't you tell us who you are? It is so fun to be here with you guys. I've watched you live a few times and you guys are hilarious. So thanks for having me on. It's an honor to be with the best in the Thank industry. Um, I am a hygienist. I started out in dentistry when I was 17 as a dental assistant and I was a sterilization assistant, so I love microbiology and, and all the things nerdy from a young age and decided to go to hygiene school and knew coming out of the op that, um, well, going into the operatory that, that while I was treating and caring and trying to make all the difference in the world that I felt like there was something beyond those walls for me. And so I said, okay, self, what are you going to do with this? So I went back and got my master's in dental hygiene and was, I taught for, oh my gosh, I don't do not do age math. You hear me right now? You're not allowed to do age it's math. not allowed on this show. Thank hey, you. Hey, hey, look who you're talking to. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> So um, Chad would have to use the calculator on his phone. Yeah. So yeah. We don't want to embarrass the two of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's not, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep it, um, we'll keep That's it classy right. as Chad would say. So um, anyway, I've been in education for 26 years. I've been a uh, speaker, international speaker for 20, 25 of those. It's crazy how, how life just flies, right? And then, so I worked in dental hygiene programs. I grew up sort of like teething on the academics, no pun intended, pun intended. And working in the dental hygiene programs taught everything just about except for public health, because you always have that one person in the, 
and the university who's really passionate about public health and it's like, okay, you've got this. Um, then went on to um, graduate school and finished my master's. I taught at Virginia Commonwealth University Dental Schools. I taught perio residents how to scale, which end of the scaler to use. I mean, dentists not to put lidocaine in the fluoride tray. That happened. That was a real story. It was it was the funniest day mm -hmm. when they had like a rotation through the hygiene clinic. <laughs> I don't know that I've told that story publicly, but we had to do, we were running the, the, the recare, you know, the, the hygiene appointment at VCU and they, that the dental students are coming in, it's the end, they've gotten all their checks and they're getting ready to administer fluoride and they come in, this is with the foam trays, you know, mm -hmm. going way back. And they're like, I was like, what do you have in there? Cause it wasn't doing what it was. He's like this right here. And I was like, that's, that's lidocaine gel. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm I promise you, this fluoride treatment won't hurt. It won't. <laughs> yeah. it won't. You won't feel anything. Nope, not a thing. <laughs> so anyway, did all of that and then uh, owned my own business and opened up a dental hygiene program um, in Williamsburg, where I am now in Virginia, and love the accreditation part. Love to, to work with the people. Um, the president of the college called me in to say, hey, Kelly, I mean, this is how, just how cool life is, right? Because you don't even know what's going to happen to you. But in all of this, we know that we're dental professionals and how much we improve lives, but I think we improve it through that communication and, and being able to turn the ship and have everyone so excited. I learned that on a larger level when the president asked me to be the, the SAC COC accreditation faculty. And I was like, I answer the phone. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. You know that, right? And he's like, we'll get you all the tools. And How do you say no to the president of the college? Right. You, don't, you don't. So did that. And it was an amazing and difficult and just fantastic process. We had commendations and went on to the corporate world to teach with Philips Oral Healthcare as a professional educator. And I've had Next Level Dental Hygiene as my baby for probably about seven or eight years and then fast forwarding to now, well, sort of, you know, I went back to school to get my PhD in organizational leadership and business, because again, it's about the people. It's about the human potential for me and how we show up in the dental industry. I didn't know how I was going to, how I was going to apply my PhD, had no clue, but I just knew that it would just show up. You know, you focus on the what, and then the how just shows up, right? And anything I need. So um, yeah. And so I opened, opened the business. Next Level Dental Hygiene will be the largest CE provider for dental hygienists in the world. We're building it course by course, brick by brick. It's meeting hygienists where they are in their, awesome. career, in their career. So if they want more about how to treat special needs patients, if they're older, they need more information about that, or if they want to know how to overcome objections or how to do certain facets of um, practice management or how to ease into what it's like to go into an academic environment before they go and they invest in a master's degree to figure out what that's like. Like, what does their onboarding look like? What's the food chain look like for that? So it's that letter. It's that kind of like the, did you guys go to dental schools where they have like the D, like the D.5 programs where it's like that readiness year? Or have you heard of that? Yeah. Did you go to dental school? Huh? Chad didn't. Chad, did, no. you, go did you go to dental school? No. Yeah. Well, you kept showing up. Online degree. <laughs> he stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, he watched a couple you. of YouTube videos. I, it was four weekends. <laughs> University of Turks and Caicos. Yeah. <laughs> In a good hand. We can. But no, I didn't have that program where we were. No, we didn't. So either. like at VCU, if it's a if it's yeah. a student who is, it's a year of readiness. It's that D.5 before their first year. So I think of it like that. I readiness. thought that's when you didn't pass your boards as a D4. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I never picked up on that. Because they, <laughs> they seemed like they didn't even know the dental school. So yeah. I'm thinking that they were new and they looked really young. Because, you know, the older you get... It's like the students look like they're 12 and it's like, yeah. I know. How oh. did this happen? Trust me. What? What? How did that happen? Um, so anyway, that's going to next level dental hygiene is going to be the largest CE provider. We do stuff live on demand. We're having certifications. And then also too, we, um, we focus on teams and high performance teams. We have a, an amazing 
um, course that we're launching this year, Allison LeCousier and I are focusing on high performance teams. We already have some amazing locations set up in Banff, Canada, yeah, cool. location to be announced. And then we're also doing one in uh, Bermuda as well, the end of the year. That's a little selfish of Allison to have one in Bermuda. I mean, <laughs> I, I personally don't like it. You know, I, I had to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get yeah. it. Twist my rubber arm. Sometimes you just got to take one for the team, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what yeah. friends do. You know, I'm yeah. just here to support her. Exactly. Will Will the courses that you're speaking of will there be like a continuum? Like they could actually subscribe to it and build upon a certain curriculum set. The way that we're building it at this point. So we're going. I get to go to Bermuda. I have the honor of going to Bermuda for on behalf of all of you all, because I know that no one wants to go next week at this time. Oh, my, my Heine will be in Bermuda and we are going to fil start filming our courses. And so what this is awesome. going to be is you're going to have the prerequisites where you can go online. You can see the prerequisites to the courses. That's where we, what, what we are getting to film. We are doing our curriculum mapping, our grid right now and building everything out because Allison does it. I mean, I mean, she is on fire with offices and that's what she speaks on all the time, as do I. And so then after this prerequisite, they can come with us in person and energize that team. Understand your habits, what your habits say about you, your identity. And I'm happy to talk about some of the, the golden nuggets that the teams will get out of this as well, because it's it's a different time. We connect differently now, I think, and you know, because we just went through that period of time, like you guys were talking about a while ago, we just love on each other differently. We have different yeah. needs. I think our human needs have changed as well. So this will be a virtual platform, obviously, if you're filming video, but will there will be live components as well? There will be. There will be. So this year, we know of two that we are already scheduling and uh, are booked. And they will but both it, be it, advanced it's this year? Yes. What did you say, Jeff? No, no. I was going to say it's just, it. it's a smart way of doing it because... You know, one of the biggest problems with live education is kind of gauging the level that everyone individually is at and trying to bring them all together. You don't want to be too far ahead of people yeah. who might not be there or too far or, or, or speaking too slowly for people who may have an accelerated program. So to have those prerequisites virtual where at least everybody coming into the live room has kind of got a base level to start at it. I think it allows you to be really more effective during the live presentation. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's our intention. We're being <coughs> extremely intentional about this. I have an extensive background in curriculum design and mapping and how to build things out and what are our deliverables? What are our KSAs? What are our mm -hmm. learning objectives that we are delivering on? So they know what they're going to lead with and how they can take it. You know, the thing of how they're going to take it and apply it Monday morning. No, how they and also that and how is it going to change their life and how they show up in mm -hmm. their purpose? That's that's so incredible. And I think there needs to be much more of that. So this is going to be not just virtual, but on demand. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be on demand which is going to be, we're going to be live and, you know, with limited capacity <sighs> and they'll, they'll complete all of these on-demand courses pre as, as a prerequisite before. There you go. Um, yeah. It okay. may be that eventually we go to all and all on-demand course, but I don't know. We just, we just love the human connection is just so important to get the teams together, to collaborate, to come up with their team goals, to agree who's going to be accountable because that's their love and their purpose. Well, I, I think also, you know, just that, that, that virtual interaction goes so far, but that live just really ignites everybody. And there, there could also be a little accountability when they leave and that you meet people who are similar minded and, and, and pursuing the same goals and they'll be able to reconnect afterwards. So kudos to you for doing that. Let's go back to this metacognition. Thing. <laughs> Here we go. Please. You no. know what I'm saying? This is because he's just excited. He can pronounce it. It wasn't yeah. like the definition was. Hey Kelly, cool. I think part of our program needs to be him spelling it or, or <laughs> we can take each letter and make it, you know, make it like an acronym. So we'll, by the end of our program. Totally. 
Medicaid. I just Medicaid. want everybody here to know that I won the fourth grade spelling bee. Okay. You did? And in seventh grade, I went to the state tournament and I lost out on the word stare because I forgot to ask a definition. But oh, wasn't that in Texas? That's stare. Tricky. Stare. Which one but that was, was it? in Texas, Chad? It was S T A I R, and I spelled S T A R E because they were staring at me when they asked it. Oh, that's <laughs> unfair. You need to redo uh, it. I was, Next, I, I've never lived it down. I, I, there have been many a nights that I've, I've cried wow, myself. We're getting deep now. Yeah. yeah, we are. There it is. It's all out in the open. But I think we need to do a redo of his fourth grade spelling bee for him. I can't remember. This, this, this could be a show. This could be a show. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. It could be. For sure. It so next be. word is dog. Yeah. yeah. So Kelly, so I can stop this train wreck before it <laughs> takes out anyone else, <laughs> is tell me what do you, I mean, what is the primary focus for you? Like what is the first thing that you want to see a team accomplish as a team? So you know, you've got all these groups together. They've taken the prerequisites. I mean, what is the first step towards becoming a a solidified team and a you know and a and a proactive hygiene program within a solidified team? Sure. Thank you. Great question. We have it sectioned out into four pillars. It's three for the team, the individual as a team and as a practice. So we focus on the individual first and then the team next, and then how that, how that builds up to that practice and what it means for that practice and their practice identity, how they're operating. And then also too, we have a section for the docs as well, or the team leader, team manager, you know, however that practice is set up in terms of ownership, because we feel like there needs to be um, a set of knowledge there for that individual well to empower them because here they're going, I just want to show up and do dentistry. Can everybody just mm -hmm. thing, you know? And so we, we have a segment also for the doctors or for the owners as well. So the first part to answer your question, Jeff, is the individual, that self-care, that energy that you're bringing to that practice to be, to be aware of yourself. Part of that metacognition chat uh, knowing your what and your why, not just not just what it is, but why you want to do it, what's your purpose, and then are you serving that purpose through your work? So we do self discovery there, and then your growth mindset. What's what are you bringing to the table with your energy? Are you that person who's the victim in the office? Because a lot of offices that we work with, think of this example. Oh, I can't do that because the doctor doesn't want me to. Well, what's your role in this and how can you, how can you help overcome that? How, how can you help the doctor overcome this? You know, what is your part in this? Instead of saying, I can't because it's like, well, what can you and how can you do that? So to take that, to take those two questions and so that individual can answer it and say, okay, well, how is that serving you if you do that? Because if you want to, if you want to deliver the best standard of care, because I heard you say you did, you know, I'm, I'm distilling this down. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do that by that limiting belief of what you're saying right now? And how do you overcome that? What's keeping you from getting there? And then we go into the values and the identity of the individual, what their habits, their just their individual habits are saying about them. So like, for instance, if you, if you're a person who starts to go to the gym, right. And you, and you are a person some people start out, they have to go for a few minutes at a time until they get used to it. Well, are they gym rat? No. But what are they? They're a person who shows up to the gym. They're accountable to their gym time, right? So it's what it's saying about you, what your habits and your behaviors are saying about you, that identity, and then how that shows up in your why and your purpose. So this, this is all in the, um, in that prerequisite course. And then when we get down into it, when we bring the teams together, we go into like personal strategic planning and like how you're showing up in the industry. It's like, it's so amazing. It's life-changing work. And then of course that self-awareness. So that's all the stuff underneath the individual, because you have to know, know thyself first. You have to have that self-awareness as an individual. 
that metacognition. And I, we have testing we talk about in the live courses, the individual's uh, DISC assessment. I'm licensed certified in DISC, um, emotional intelligence, and also behavioral drivers as well. So the report that I print out, it also gives like some really cool coaching tips on, hey, if you're not great on on rating people and taking people's temperature in terms of empathy, what, how are some ways that you can work on that? You know, it gives you coaching advice. And then also too, I coach on that. But then the second facet of it, Jeff, is team, that communication, that culture. What is your vision, your mission, your values as a team? So now you know as an individual, how do you know it as a team? And what kind of energy are you bringing to that team through your habits? So it's, you can see that it's all fluck, it, it's all just tethered through here. And then how are you accountable to each other, to your other teammates, to what you're delivering to the patients? And what does that look like? Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. No, no. I, I, oh, what I love about this, so, you know, one of my heroes in the world is Stephen Covey. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so in the seven habits of highly effective people, you know, everything you're describing kind of follows that because you know, the, the, the first habit is like, I'm in charge. It's like, I got to know me. I got to, I'm in charge of what happens to me. I'm in charge of how I react to things like the outside world is, you know, just what it is, but ultimately it's how I respond to that. That makes me who I am. And, and I can't do anything as a team member into our real, until I realize who I am and, and what my values are. And then, then it moves on to the team. And it sounds like you're describing exactly that. It just, that self-realization before moving on to, okay, now that I know who I am, I know how I can contribute to the team. Yep. You know, one of the things too, is that you, you talk about, you know, you're, you're basically, empowering from one of the things you said, you're, you're speaking to hygienists for the most part, correct? Now this is, well, now, but this is four teams, four dental teams. So the entire office would show up for this. Right. But when you're talking to hygienists, I think one of the, the things is that at, at this stage of the game, current situation that we're in right now, the hygienist has the power to where if the doctor's not going to, you know, abide by what they learn, or I shouldn't say abide, but if the doctor's not on board with what they're learning and the level of care that they want to give, there's plenty of opportunities out there for them to seek other employment. Yeah. And that's, that's something that, you know, I think of on a daily basis is that, you know, we want to keep everybody happy because there's, there's a shortage right now of people that really want to come back to work. And there's also, there's always a shortage of people who are quote unquote like-minded and really looking out for the best interest of the patient and the team. And, and I think that you, you have a great advantage to be able to share that and that the hygienists have a great advantage to go back to work and say, you know what, you know, if this isn't going to work out. I'm going to go elsewhere because there's plenty of places to choose from that would it's, it's, it's an interesting time in our profession for that. It really is. And it's no different for dentists or assistants. Sure as well, because dentists have that opportunity now too. So it's that really knowing what you want out of it. And if it, if it does not align with your core values, then how is it serving you basically in life period, the end? Yeah. You know, because if it's not, if it's not helping you, it's hindering you and what's keeping you back. You know, you, you got to get on the other side of fear because everything that you've ever wanted in your life is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that's keeping you right there and just hold you back. So thank you. And, and, and to your point too, as you all were talking, as I was growing up as a baby hygienist, our dentist was so awesome. And she took us to go see Tony Robbins live. And so that's where you get your stuff. That's where you get your injections of stuff. Why don't we have that in dentistry? Mm -hmm. So That's what we want to bring. We want to bring the Tony Robbins aspect to high performance teams, how to make them accountable, how to inject this for our patients, for the, to improve overall health outcomes of our team and our patients, that they can feel that they resonate that too. And then, you know, Chad, back to your point as well of that office 
as well attracting that person they want and the brand that they're that they're exuding. And you know, I coach a, I coach a lot of offices on brand awareness and then that consumerism of the patient and that that dental professional seeking opportunity. What what story are you telling people before they ever walk in your door? But all of this comes from that team and being aware of who you are and being centered. And you can get it all in one course here. You don't have to go read 400 books because we've already done all that. You know, <laughs> I can bring it all in one place and be like, here, here you go. Now take it in practice, sit down with your team and do it. And then the last, the last column of it, if you will, for the practice puts the individual and team together and it goes into workflow and systems as well and setting expectations for the team, what's expected of folks, you know, what happens when communication breaks down, who are we and how we do, you know, so it brings that team culture to the practice culture, like what are we about? And then that team and practice accountability as well. And then lastly, but not least the KPIs and what that means, mm -hmm. because it's not, it's not, you know, there's so many, and I can speak to my profession. I love, I love us. And we think that KPIs means that mean that we're selling. And it means Thank that you for saying that. We yeah. have this argument every week on Dennis in the Know. And and too many dentists just they just get into this whole thing where if you speak like a business person, you're selling. And and you know it, it it's just not the case. You've got to still be a business person. KPIs are one of the most critical things in dentistry. So thank you for saying that. I appreciate that very for much. Sure. And that's a strong belief of ours. And because that KPI is an indication of how well you're educating. Yeah. To me, yeah. that's my personal belief. And so everything that I do with Next Level, everything that I speak on, everything that I'm about is about empowering that hygienist, that team member, that, that team to be able to leverage their human potential to then take that and say, okay, how can I use this to improve lives forever? The end, you know, and how can I up my game? And, and then two, there's, there's not really a, there's KPIs for marketing, for phone calls missed, for all this stuff, but there's no KPI on hu human behavior right now in the dental office. And so that's why we start with that self, that critical piece of that. And, but it comes out and it tells the story in the KPI. So there, Kelly, we have I a question. I love that phrase. There's no KPI for human behavior. Yeah. And I that's like that so too. very true. We have a question for you. If you'll look uh, below you. What are you seeing? And thank you, Jen, for the question. What are you seeing in teams that are shifting that move towards excellence? So I think what I'm understanding that Jen is asking, so what is that it factor? What is that special sauce? Probably is what Jen's asking. It's the culture. It's the culture of being vulnerable and trusting and knowing enough about yourself and when to ask for help and communicating it in a way that you're not triggering someone through that metacognition because you know other people in your office through that emotional intelligence that you have in your office and you're, you're, you're communicating in a way that connects. That's that, that's that, that's that, um, that, that makes all the difference in the world, but you, you have that, you have that empathy, you have that, okay, something's not right. What can I do? I know this about that person. Let's talk about it. But that's the special sauce. That communication piece is 100% that, and that, that empathy for everybody to stop because most, most dentists are D's, you know, they're dominant and most of their staff are I's and we're, <laughs> thought you were going in a whole different direction with the D thing. No, yes, <laughs> assessment. We're on this. There's a lot of other D words you could use. D, you know, I, I am not talking about, you know, the distal. Yeah. Right now. No, that wasn't the D I was referring <laughs> to, but carry on. We're all carry a bunch of <laughs> Yeah. But so dentists are, you know, high D's typically. They're dominant. They want information fast. Go, go, go. Tell me what you need. What do you want? Get out of my way. Let me get to the operatory. And we're like, and then so what are you doing this afternoon? What's your third favorite reptile? You know, you just describe my Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> 
And so you have all these personalities in the office. Yeah. So Jen, you know, getting to know your staff and knowing what makes them tick and knowing what triggers them, their blind spots, your blind spots, just that by, by itself makes a huge difference. Yes. That fierce empathy. Yes. And those courageous conversations as well. Yes. Yes. Who I, wrote uh, that doesn't do shit. DMD damn mean doctor. Was that Bobby? Yeah, that's Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> on this side, I can't see who it is. It's really funny. I love your audience. Thank you guys for participating. <laughs> well, you know, we're getting some great private messages regarding you know, what you're talking about. And it's, it's definitely, definitely relatable and, I love how you're you're approaching the teams, and I think that I think that you all are going to have great success, great I great agree. success. Thank you. And you know, we're we've all been through a lot. We shoot, we went through a lot before we got to COVID. I mean, if y'all yeah. can get through dental school, we get through hygiene school. Come on, we're on the better side of things, right? And so, going through this and meeting it with a level of um, grace and saying, "Okay, how can I how can I serve in this role?" Like I wanted to when I was applying to dental school, when I was applying to dental hygiene school, what did I want out of this profession? So bad, so eager after all those years to work for, and am I showing up in that every day? Because that's it. Because many hygienists are resistant to change. I'll just speak about my profession. We are. We're scared to death of the technology. Sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> I'm like Jack went looking up metacognition again. Yeah. <laughs> I was moving the mouse and it popped up. <laughs> no, that's okay. But um, to be able to, to take this and say, okay, what does this technology mean to you? So I work with offices, I write programs, I work with technology companies and help help the hygienists also understand how to take this tech, not be scared of it, but embrace it and use it to serve in your serve your potential of your patient and optimize your time and your operatory. So uh, a different question, do you, just out of curiosity, do you still practice clinical hygiene at all anymore? I do. I do every few months. Yep, yeah. I do. Um, and it's it's fun. And of course, when you're consulting, you're doing it because you're showing what showing them what right looks like, right? And yeah. the way the, the way that it goes, yeah, but I do. And it's it's so much fun to to practice what you preach and to hold on to your words and have that empathy when things are swirling a thousand miles an hour, just to, just to stop and breathe and say, does this really need to come out of my mouth? What do I do next? Um, how am I being perceived right now? Not even, not even mentioning, am I on time? Is my next patient here? <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. And, and I think it does make it more relatable. And I, and I, I figured you did, but I'm going to throw Kelly's uh, a plug here. I, we followed each other on social media for a while and you know, there's, there's people that you see that work with other people. And there was a post a few weeks ago and she was working with some hygienists at a, at a program. And it's one of those posts where you can just see the compassion. And so I know that what you're telling us is the way that you run your business, you run your consulting and the way that you work with teams. And so once again, I just wish you all the best success. So I think you're going to do great. Thank you, Chad. Uh, and if anybody wants to follow us, we're I'm on Next Level DH on Instagram, and then also I have a podcast too. If I can do a shameless plug for that, it's called the. Put Dental it in the comments. Oh, I mean, no, yeah. I mean yes. Do a yeah, shameless plug, but that's comments. what this is all about. Please. Okay. Share your so, podcast. Share okay. this. I don't know how to multitask. I'm, we you love know, shameless plugs. You can do it afterwards. You can okay, do it I'm going to do it after. But it's yeah. it's called the Dental Handoff. It's about all things communication that we don't say basically. Okay. And because that's what it's called, right? The handoff in the office. How is the handoff? It's usually things fail in the handoff yeah, when people absolutely. don't connect the dots. So that's what it's called. All the things, you know, the dental handoff, it's to serve your next level. So you, um, it's on pod, it's on uh, Apple stitch, you know, all the things it's on all the things of, for podcasts. So thank you so much. Love that. Well, our, our pleasure, uh, I think that, you know, if you're available, we'd love for you to contribute to our group with anything that you may have. And, you know, uh, feel free to write your podcast, your your websites, whatever in the comments. I mean, we thank you for being here and you're welcome to give yourself. It's not a shameless plug. I mean, based upon talking to you, it's less than shameless. So 
it's kind of a me metacognitive effort on your behalf. <laughs> he had, spell that, Chad. Spell yeah. it. Still, well, still don't quite get the meaning of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can certainly explain it. You don't understand it, Jeff, or no? Or Chad, Chad, <laughs> Chad just wanted to use it in a sentence. He didn't did. know if it was going to be appropriate or not. He just wanted to use it in a sentence. Yes, I did. I did. It's that. <laughs> it's that high D in me. <laughs> Yeah, it sure is. All right, this is really going downhill now. So one yeah. more thing, if there, for those of you all, um, I know Chad and Jennifer and I speak a lot for Align Technology. We are going to be in Raleigh live talking about the digital difference on April the 15th. We would love to have you there. How to use digital to make a difference in your practice, mm -hmm. how to engage your patients, how to engage your team in doing that for the best outcomes because they can see it. They they can see it. They they know what to expect and it's an emotional connection. It's a verbal connection, all the things. So bring your teams, register. We have a few spots left, I think, but love to see you in person in Raleigh. Yeah, so that sounds a like a great opportunity for me to go to Key West and text sunsets to all of our viewers. Yeah. Wouldn't that be neat? <laughs> yeah. Hey. I, I only did that three times. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jeff, you want to close us out? No, nah, I, I, Kelly, great having you. I, I love some of your thoughts, your ideas. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff this community is for is how do we just keep making ourselves better? How do we make our teams better? How do we just perform better as practitioners and as business owners? Which, hate to say it, we are all business owners, whether, you know, it, it, it's just part of the deal. So well, and Jeff, um, we if I really appreciate say, you being, what's that? It's, well, if I can just say, it's, it's always so good to bring folks on who shine light to opportunities, right? Because I think we don't all know what's out there and available to educate ourselves and our team for everybody to have opportunities for, for professional growth. We get in our kind of, you know, tunnels and, and maybe we hear what our colleagues do in next door or whatever, and, and we sort of follow those paths. I think one of the things that we're doing here is just bringing so many amazing educators and uh, key people in our industry that are trying to make all of us better and treat our patients better and provide high level care. We can't lose. We just keep opening doors of opportunities for everybody to see what really amazing people are doing out there. I, I love it. I'm so glad you were here, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. It's an honor. Right. Yeah. Thank you I so much, too. Kelly. Thank you. Right. Have a good night. And for all the rest of you out there, hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Um, we certainly love doing it. We love bringing you the information. This is fun for us. We hope it's fun for you. And we hope you all have a great week. And we'll see you next Hump Day Happy Hour. Cheers, everyone.